Good evening, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Hi, everybody. Just finished um, a physiotherapy session uh, with a beautiful soul. So um, my foot is feeling great, a little bit sore, but really good. Um, a, a good pain. <laughs> a good pain. <laughs> is there such thing? Welcome, everybody. Could I have a sound check before we start this evening? Um, a sound check would be nice. Hi. Hi, uh, Quantum. Uh, my eyesight tonight after that, it's been dark in here. I've just switched the light on, so my eyes are trying to adjust to the light. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, hi, Peter. Hi, Brendan. Hi, everybody. Some people are just jumping on board now. Um, am I a little bit early? What time is it? Maybe I'm a little bit early. Um, but we've got a few people on already. So, uh, oh, thank you for the sound check. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, there was a, a couple of things that um, uh, we were going to discuss. And I... I take notice of people's messages if it pops out and I see it. One was the difference between um, the the tools of divination and, and that is um, somebody, I can't remember was it who it was, um, but I think, was it Brendan, was it you? I'm not sure, but the question was something like, um, can you describe or uh, do you know the difference between oracle cards and and uh, angel cards and others if you want to if you're here now if you want to give me that question again um we can maybe look into that a little bit more if people are interested in uh, the difference between certain cards um and what have you and i can give you some um of my stories or at least my observation to cards and how i perceive them and how i worked with them over um 20 years I've um, a full-time healer for 12 of those years and a full-time psychic reader as well. If you don't, if you don't know who I am, if you're new here, um, I'm on top of a, a mountain called Mijas Pueblo. And um, I used to uh, give um, tarot readings and um, psychic and spiritual readings uh, and healing sessions. Uh, for many people who came from all over the world um and yeah i was actually voted uh, number one psychic by um an american um company that ridiculous really but i think it was to do with votes so lots of people voted and um there were a lot you know lots of people in america you know that number one psychic in the world and it went right down to the top 100 so they, they they made it so like so who's who's number one in you know england who's number one in america and germany and uh, i think i hit it twice running for two years number one so it's bullshit of course but it just shows that people did care because it was all about the amount of votes that were logged in so um it gave the amount of votes that was logged as well so I had a, a fairly big clientele. I worked full time. I actually worked Saturday and Sundays as well. So many people still uh, try to contact me daily for a, a psychic reading, please. And I say I've, I, I retired years ago. And the reason why I retired years ago is because of health, because I, was, I wasn't healthy at a certain point in my life. I had overstretched. I didn't listen to my body and I was just trying to be a people pleaser for everybody. And it's a, a, a phenomena that happens to many healers and psychics and many people in general who are good, kind, caring, empathetic, you know, and, and just loving people. They never, ever think about themselves and put themselves on a back burner until they're burnt out and that's exactly kind of what i did even as a healer it can happen so yeah um 
Hi, Peter. So here's the question tonight. We'll, we'll, um, it's nine o'clock now, so we'll uh, kind of make a start if everybody is here. Um, so let's fire away then. What are the differences between the different types of cards uh, and how are they to be read or interpreted? First of all, there are um, certain cards like the Way Deck, uh, certain cards like Angel Cards, uh, Doreen Virtue, and, and many other Oracle cards. And they normally come, Peter, with, with a book, nearly all of them. So you'll turn a card over and you'll have a very short message on there. But if you want the longer interpretation, you'll open the book up and you'll read maybe two pages. And that's within Oracle cards and that's within Angel cards. Uh, with Tarot cards, it depending on who you study with and who's teaching you how to read and interpret the cards, there are certain... Um, kind of um, understandings about tarot cards, uh, i.e. the balls or the circles, whatever you want to, you know, call them, uh, relate to money, and then the swords, which relate to issues and problems, and then you've got the wands, which relates to the mind, and so on. So the, the, they're, all, they're all interpreted in, in somebody's unique way. So it could be centuries old, and people take that information and, and pass it down generation to generation. So my story is a little bit different. And the reason why I'm saying this is because breaking the mold of anything can be very, very dangerous for um, an idea or uh, a cult or a religion. See, the whole point about, you know, the Bible, the whole point about, you know, way deck, the whole point about angel cards is that you follow what you've been taught. But when you break free from that and you're not somebody who is so easily um, programmed in the set, my, mine wasn't that I wasn't programmed. It was more that I couldn't learn from a book because I got dyslexia, dyspraxia, and it, I, 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 I can't, I was never good at school. I wasn't good. My memory wasn't brilliant. So it was impossible for me to learn from my from my mentor and how frustrating that was for her. But she soon realized that she didn't need to teach me about how the cards relate to in the way deck or in certain decks. And then she presented me with a deck of cards which had no meaning to the tarot cards or you might see certain things in those cards where oh yeah that's that's the ten of um swords uh, or you know that's the hangman fair enough but it it became evident to her that when she first met me and i was reading angel cards that i wasn't actually reading angel cards i was actually just looking at the card and then I'd have a conversation and she'd say, well, that's not even in the card. How did you know that? So she noticed something within me that I didn't notice in myself. I'm like, oh, I don't really know. I don't know where that came from. And then she realized that this is the real deal. This is a guy who's really, really doing it without knowing how to do it. And then she got very excited. She invited three people to have readings with me who I didn't even know she was bringing, but she put sent them around the corner. And then they'd go back and report to her just to make sure that what she was feeling was right. And, though, and thus she took me under her wing and encouraged me by way of giving me information after I had done certain readings or certain sessions. So she would put the pieces together. So I'd go, all oh, right, is that what happened? Yeah, that's what exactly what happened. This is what you're doing. Mark, you don't realize it, but you're working in this way. And I'm going, okay. So I never became a pupil of some teacher that says, this is how you do it. It was actually the other way around. And she was encouraging me by saying, oh yeah, 
what you're doing is this. So she was putting the final piece of things that I was doing that I didn't realize I was doing. So she was giving me confidence, like I wasn't going crazy. So it's very difficult for me to, to, to share with you the difference between the cards, knowing that I have never learned the cards, how they're meant to be learned. So what I can share with you is my experience of working with cards as a, a natural reader without any um, interference, without any um, uh, religious kind of, of doctrine. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's a great start because people have to learn from me. So people will uh, say, okay, tell me what that card means. But what I try to do is try to open them up to a further energy of, okay, it's ABC. No, it's more than ABC. Don't limit yourself to what the card says. Expand your awareness. And then I'd sit people who want to learn tarot with me. And I'd, 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 I'd write on a piece of paper something, fold the paper up, put it in front of them and say, just turn some cards over and start talking. So they start talking. And then when they'd finished, I'd, they'd open the piece of paper and it'd blow them away. So there was no, I, I tried to not bring any interference when I teach. I try to bring openness and, and a confidence that, hey, you're not going to get it wrong. It just is what it is. And, and there's no fear in that. So reading the angel cards was an energy of everything that I believe was on a high level of love and healing. So angel cards that I use of Doreen Virtue, no matter what you think of her now, she made some great cards. And those cards, I will never, ever say anything negative about them. The only thing I will say is that eventually, for me, the cards didn't work anymore. And that's an interesting uh, thing. Why didn't the cards work anymore? I'll tell you why. Because my readings went into a deeper place and when those cards of love and and healing and even the, the the last well she wasn't the last lady but she wasn't far off one lady who came to me that i believed wasn't of this world but i believe she was angelic she told me why would she even do that she looked at me and she said these cards one day are not going to serve you well they're not going to work and I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? What are you on about? I, I, I like, I understood. I could feel what she was saying. But like, why would you even say that? These cards are amazing. And there was a day that a woman walked through my door in Mias Pueblo when I had a little tiny um, shop upstairs. And she sat there and I put three angel cards out. And I can only remember two. And one of them talks about the love of, of um, a child that you'd lost in the spirit world. For the first time <laughs> like that makes no sense because this lady has not lost a child and then there was something about an, an animal in the spirit world that you've lost and i thought no she's never had any animals and it was at that point that i said i'm sorry but i can't this doesn't make any sense and she looked at me she says what do you mean what what's wrong i said nothing's wrong it's just my cards are not working <laughs> and and at that moment, I threw the cards, opened my drawer and put a new set of cards that my mentor had given me, which was the Carl Rory deck. And I never looked back. And I realized that when I started using these modern version of tarot cards, which are to me are a doorway of divination that helps me with so many different forms, shapes, numbers, names, words, colors. And there's so much more that's being given and more deeper. So that's how I see Oracle cards. For me, I don't know what it is about the Oracle card, but they've never kind of rung in a way that as 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 uh, uh, 
has made me feel like it's not that they're not beneficial. I, I can't put my finger on the word, but I've had about 20 or 30 decks of Oracle cards. And the only thing I can say is to me, they just felt like cards, just like my cards, my angel cards and my other angel cards in blue. They, they're just angel cards and they just give a nice message and that's it. They're a lovely card and they do some great work, amazing work, fan, fabric, fantastic. But on a level of attuning to your client as a one-to-one -one level and trying to understand um, ways of healing uh, the situation of your client's trauma or of grief or trying to attune into the spirit world and, and get these vital messages, I find that Oracle cards are limited and I don't get any more than what I get on that card. So for me, my angel, same with my angel cards, I'm not being negative. I'm just telling you how I feel. My, the angel cards that I've got here that I made, specifically when I made them, they were for pur they were a purpose of, okay, I've made these cards because spirit said while I was walking this. So I'm going to make a card that says this. So the right person is going to get that message in that card. That's incredible. It's mind blowing. It changes lives. But when you're working on a one to one level with a client and you're trying to go deep and you're trying to find truths and, and root cause issues, the Oracle cards to me never served me that way. So an Oracle card to me is a beautiful card. Boom. I got it. It's lovely. That's it. The tarot card of the Carl Rorick is like opening doorways and more doorways and it's never ending and it can continue to a place where there's more healing than you could possibly imagine. So that would be my interpretation of Oracle. Angel cards, like I've just said, my angel cards, Doreen Virtues, they're brilliant. But they, they're, they're kind of more limited if you struggle in actual attuning to the spiritual message or the energy around you or to your intuition. So, so a card can be an opener into a conversation, and that's what happened with me. So the angel card opened me up into a conversation that then continued and that conversation went from one place to somewhere completely different so they were a great starter for me great starter so that's how i see the angel cards a wonderful starter to anybody who wants to walk a path of learning how to attune into themselves and to go a little bit uh, deeper than maybe the oracle card so i'd start with the oracle then i go on to the angel and then i go on to the tarot tarot cards but my interpretation of tarot may be a little bit different to others now i have had this said many times no mark i learned the tarot card but uh the the uh, the way deck i learned i learned this way that way but although i learn all of those things i still bring in intuition into the reading so i've heard that many times so I don't think really that I, I could be wrong, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I could be wrong. But I would say most tarot readers don't just say one thing about the card that is on that card. I think they'll expand in ways that they'll even shock themselves. Now, are there readers out there who just specifically says, OK, I've read the book. I know how the way deck is. I know how it works. I know how the, and this is how I'll always read it because this is how I've learned it. So the interpretation or the understanding of, of cards, depending on each person that, that, that you read for, is a very individual and very unique unique experience so i think it's not the cards it's the person who is reading and more so um 
how you feel about them on a level of um, their energy. Some people get a bit upset and offended when I say get up and walk away if you're not feeling happy with the reading. Um, I had one person who got up and walked away from me when I was doing a, a, a circle uh, in, um, a, it was like a, a, a blessing circle that she sat in the center of the circle and I started the healing work. She just got up and walked off and there's nothing wrong with that. It, she just didn't fit with me and something didn't feel right. It's okay. It's all right. No problem. So having, you know, having the confidence not to, not to feel bad for the person that's reading for you, who is making you feel really uncomfortable who is really not on on the energy level that you, that you feel you feel comfortable with there's no reason why you say look I, I don't know what it is but I don't feel too good right now and I'll I'll may come back at another time but right now I don't feel too good and and not upset them rather than sit all the way through that session so you have to take control of any kind of uh, of anybody who reads for you now, there is times that you will have a reading with somebody and it will feel damn right painful. But at the same time, you'll know it's real and you won't get up. You won't walk away from it. That's pain. That's sometimes good to know. Right. But I always found that a good reader will never leave you hanging on or in total confusion because a good reader will look deep into the cards and look for the answers rather than show you your faults, problems with your partner, issues with life and all that. That that serves no purpose because we already know that. Like, did I pay you just to come to, to, to like, I'm, I'm not here to be impressed by what you can see about me. And, and right at the beginning, that's how my teacher used to try to explain to me. And I, I'm like, but, most people really truly know themselves inside, but they fight and, 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 and push it away. So you already know what's wrong with them. But how about if we find the answers? And what I was good at was finding the answers. And that's what I used to look for. Um, and that's, that makes a good reader. So they get up and they have a big smile on their face. Okay, now I've got some, I've got information of how I can move forward with my life. And the choice is yours because there's no there's no such thing as one answer when you're reading. I know I'm going off off topic, but there's no such thing as as one answer. So I'll give you a great example. Somebody wanted to leave Spain, but they didn't know where they wanted to go. They had three or four places, okay? Three or four places, but they didn't know which one to go to. And when they come and sit with you and say, I, I don't know where to go. Where, where should I go, Mark? Like I don't know where you should go, but why don't we look? Okay, so, well, um, look, there's there's three places I'd like to go, Mark. Where's that? I'd like to go to Dubai. I'm thinking about Dubai. I'm thinking about going back to Germany, or I'm thinking about going to America. So I say, let's have a look. So we look at Dubai. Okay, well, if you move to Dubai, we can see here that life looks like it's going to be quite lovely to start with and then it's going to be within three months it's going to be a little bit challenging because certain things might happen legally wise uh money looks okay but then it starts to like not so good then maybe in another three months then it starts to pick up and then everything looks okay let's see what germany looks like germany looks like a real challenge it looks like you're feeling sad you, you're you're feeling actually depressed and it looks like it's like that for maybe a couple of years. And then after that, um, I, I can't really see after that. So it looks like it might be a little bit challenging in Germany for you to begin with. Now, you could, your client might ask you why. What are the reasons? And you can look deeper into that. And then America, let's look at America. America looks like it's a brilliant place for you at this moment. It looks like everything's flowing in America, that things are coming your way. People are loving you there, blah, blah, blah. So... You give, you give them choice and, and by giving them a choice, by showing them, then they make the decision, the conscious decision. I'm not saying go to America because it looks fantastic. I'm just pointing out certain things that could happen and certain things that you can avoid 
because she might say to me, well, what is it about Germany? And then I'll turn some more cards over and say, it looks like your father and your father is going to cause you a lot of grief. And maybe then your father might become sick and then you will be forced to be there and put up with his, his suffering or, or so on. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I get it. I totally get it. But you know, you're a good, you're so beautiful. You're caring and you look after him. And it looks like things get better after so long. So you, you're kind of showing them things that they can make a conscious decision what is right and wrong in their own path. You don't tell them, don't go there because of your father. And you don't say, go there because of your father. It's none of your business. None of my business, but you just point these things out. Okay, so any more questions on the cards? And did I... Did I make any, did it make any sense on, or did it make no sense? Or is there anything that you're a, a bit struggling with? Just write me a message now. Each card, by the way, when, if in, in my world, when I, if you're sat with me and I turn a card over for you, and let's say it's the sun, if I turn that same card over to another person, it can have a completely different meaning okay so sometimes it's hard to grasp the way i read and it kind of bothers some people but it is what it is i can't change the way i am i totally get it what you are saying totally makes sense and is clear i will further explore this and the cards you mentioned thank you i always wanted to know peter it's absolutely my pleasure um it really is really is hi everybody hi everybody who's turned up tonight thank you for being here it's lovely that you're here i retired uh many many years ago so no the only thing that i offer these days are online courses so if you go to markbayerski.com scroll down you'll see me uh, in purple with a lot of tarot cards in front of me. That is a, a course that is designed to share 10 full hours on a video, on a video, 10 separate videos. And it teaches you all about what I've learned about cards. And I don't know how much it is now, um, but when you buy it, we automatically send by DHL a set of the tarot cards. So as soon as they arrive, you can start the course and a lot of people have benefited. There's no doubt. We've sold thousands of courses. Uh, there is, there's no exaggeration. And uh, many people have gone on to be full-time psychics and are earning like enough money to have a happy life. So it has helped. And some people have taken the course and it's helped them through their life when it, I first started the course to you know maneuver them and help them through like i i picked i picked a card up two cards up today so they, they help you through your your daily life and if you respect them and you treat them with with the respect that they deserve you're most welcome i i like to share because i'm not going to be here that long in this world so what i share with you is i think valuable information that hopefully will live on and help people uh, to live a, a, a happier and more fruitful and, and abundant life like I, I have. And I don't just mean about money, I mean about happiness. And I mean, look at me now. I mean, two weeks ago, my foot was hanging off. It was completely broke. It was off. And I'm here after two, two weeks and two days and my foot's like the, the guy who came, the physio who came tonight, looked at my um, looked at my X-ray and said, "This is a, a one year. Um, this is a one year uh, rehabilitation." He said that if you were a football player, you wouldn't be able to play football for a minimum of a year with what's happened to you, and He's saying, does that hurt? I'm like, nope. Does this hurt? Nope. 
Does that hurt? Nope. I close my eyes. I'm doing self-healing at the same time. And he's like, wow. And I'm like, yeah. Because all that I've learned in 20 years of healing myself, I've put into myself. So I, I spend literally, I'll go onto the internet and I'll send maybe a few crystals so people can see that what crystals I've got, what I'm working with at the moment. And then I'll do a healing session. It might be half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll rest a little bit and then do a little bit more work. And then I'll do another healing session. So I do four to six hours healing work on myself. So of course I'm going to heal quicker than the average person. I know what not to eat that is going to cause great harm to my body so my body cannot then repair itself but i know how to cause great healing to my body by putting in medicine into my mouth and not medicine from the the medical industry medicine that is fruit vegetables herbs nuts seeds uh and and everything that the body craves for to be able to say okay now we can work on that body part and heal it faster so yeah i utilized all that work and i posted something today just because i'm really proud because somebody said that that's just not normal after 14 days that's not normal or it might be 15 or 16 days i don't know i have lost count that that looks like you've never had an accident and i'm like i'm really proud of the work that i've done so i i, I put posted a, a photo and so many people could feel that appreciate could feel the healing and that gave a lot of inspiration to a lot of people out there who have hurt themselves who have hurt their back hurt their neck hurt their leg hurt their foot and and it gives them encouragement apart from the odd plonker who's angry and sad and lost and that's what i'm going to talk about tomorrow but let's leave that for tonight interesting days but the right people do appreciate and understand what you do from your heart. So, Alan, pleased to pleased to meet you tonight. I hope you're well. It's always lovely uh, having you here. Sometimes the card will fall out when shuffling. Absolutely, many a times. And sometimes it seems appropriate to use that card, and sometimes it doesn't seem appropriate to use it. And I dismiss that card. Alan, that is 100% true. The amount of times that I have like just dropped a card by accident in front of a client, let me see the card. And I've said, it's not appropriate. It's not necessary. That was just simply an accident. No, there's no such thing as accident. No, no. There's, and the reason why is because you just don't, you feel that, no, that, that, what, that, that really wasn't uh, something that, that's, but, but sometimes, boom, a card comes out without even seeing it or sometimes you know uh like after a healing session i always used to give one of my cards to my client and to take away as a gift and sometimes they just go oh i've got two and i'd say well then those two cards are for you and they'd read them and fall like fall down crying with so much joy because one of the cards meant something and the other one was so mind blowing that you put them together and they made so much sense. You know, this field of work is a beautiful field of work. Although there is a lot of darkness that tries to um, attack you when you are really working in that beautiful place, it's worth all the attack and it's worth all the negativity from uh, friends and family. It really is worth it. And you know, in your heart of hearts that what you're doing is for good and for right and if you are a good and kind person you know sometimes that you are slipping into the wrong place and you have to pull yourself back out of there because we have to always be aware of our actions and who we are and we always always in in, in the, the the 10 hour course that i do i mention this i'm sure i do is that you should always remember that you could be wrong okay it's almost like saying well i, I could be wrong which means that you keep ego at bay because too many readers think that everything that they say is is gospel and that's when sometimes darkness can s s sift or seep into you and then you get the god complex and nothing but bad things can happen thereafter in my humble opinion 
Okay, any more questions, guys? A lot of people get a negative talk from the doctors and it's nice to see someone prove them wrong. Healing is possible. Yeah, like the two, the, the two things that I've always said, and it's the same as Don Tolman, 98% of mainstream medicine doctors are not needed, but 2% are. And that is stitches, if you cut yourself or you fall and you need stitches, or a break and that you need to have your bones repaired and uh, put into place. And that's always been my, like, that makes complete sense. So, yeah, but that's a personal thing. Um, I don't tell people to do either. You do whatever feels right. Yeah, more so now than ever, earth, uh, goat tree, trees. Um, more, now more than ever because of the, um, the battle between light and dark, there has been a, 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 a kind of an energy that is within this planet that is now feeding uh, and, and just, it just feels like it's an amplification of people losing their mind and going into a dark place and attacking anybody who they feel threatened by. And it seems to be, um, you've probably seen films where they've been, they've gone somewhere and all of us, or it might be a Star Trek movie and all of a sudden everybody hates each other and they're all fighting and because it's a dark energy in that room and they all then start attacking each other. Well, it feels like that globally. It's almost like somebody's opened up doorways to energies that are making people more aggressive, more, the word judgmental is just a word. What I mean is that they target people from this idea of a mirror image fear, like I, I, you, you are giving me fear, or that that there. This what I'm going to talk about tomorrow is come. Yeah, I'll leave it there. Uh, hi Ziggy, hi Amy. I've received your angel cards with the crystal the crystals I bought from you. Well, I really appreciate that, Anna Maria. Thank you so much. My sister's called Anna Maria. That's not my sister, is it? I can't see your face, but my sister's called Anna Maria. Um, that I bought from you, Mac, and they are so beautiful and always a, a message well received. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. Just so you know that nobody in the office chooses any cards that the basically all the cards are put like the 90 cards or the 44 cards each one of them are put into a separate um like bag like a little nice bag and then soon as somebody purchases a crystal or an oil whatever that it, it gets put into this bag and people say oh you chose that you knew it was me uh, you knew it was for me or or uh, did, did you did you know and i'm like no the spirit world knows and I trust that completely, completely. Virtual hug, Gaia Love Warrior. Now, yeah, I don't know. Look what's just happened to me. Uh, like, uh, you know like I, I don't know i didn't like accidents happen and things happen and i i'm i'm noticing and I, i'm not putting it out there at all but i am starting to see a lot of healers uh are uh are being stopped or or things are happening it's weird i never in my life uh in this field of work ever believed that uh, darkness had the power over us and I still don't but I find it like it might be just one of those coincidences at the moment and it could be related to that the so much so deep this is so deep but like my conclusion let's say I, I've gone round and that is is that like 
Is there doubts and can it affect us? Well, yes, it can if we allow it to. But has any uh, uh, darkness affected me? No. So why has this happened? Well, the simplest way I can explain and, and, and my conclusion is this. Let's say that you know that the world needs healing and that we're coming to a, a certain point in this world where if good doesn't stand up, then the chances are that the darkness will overshadow nearly everything. So within our consciousness, we know that we can't stop and we've got to work hard and we've got to keep going and we can't stop. And that's been me for the past two years. I can't stop what I post, what I say, what I do, healing, doing videos, doing as much as I can to help people, right? And people always used to say, slow down, Matt, slow down, Matt, slow down, Matt. And I get it. And I say, yeah, I do need to slow down. And I meditate every day. But when I get up, I bloody work hard and I, I don't stop. I am constant. One foot after the other, not stopping. So could it be that my consciousness is understands that, yes, we have to, we have to work. We have to do the best we can. But my consciousness feels that there is more of a darker energy in this world and it's building. And my brain, as it does, always kicks in and says, well, you've got to work harder. You've got to work faster. You've got to do. And maybe that that speed that I was at was the same speed uh, as, as running down the mountain, chasing an animal that I didn't need to chase. I just needed to stand there and it would have ran. Because I'm in that, that frame of energy. So I don't know. There's some people believe that I'm uh, evil because I've hurt my foot and anybody who has their foot is evil. Some people uh, believe that I needed to be slowed down because I was working too hard. But hey, guess what? Have I actually slowed down? I might not have made a video every day, but do you think I've slowed down? Have you seen my post stopping? Have you seen my, you know, uh, through the day I've been exercising, working, meditating, sending healing twice a day on my list over there. I haven't stopped. So, you know, th th there could be a multiple reasons of why this happened that I don't know about. And people who are receiving suffering and pain, I try my best to share messages with them that, that will make them one, like I'm not on my own. You're not on your own. I receive hundreds of messages a week of ill health towards me i have i have hundreds of messages calling me evil and saying that i'm a, a devil worshiper saying that i'm a con artist every day all the time you're the biggest con artist in the world you're a, a fake you're yeah, i get them constantly but you know when i make these videos people often look at me and think oh he's very sensitive sensitive to a degree, but not sensitive that I like, I like, oh, and shaking a corner. I know now, I've got to the age where I know that when somebody's attacking, they're in a bad place and that they are actually in the darkness. They are the darkness because I don't attack people. I don't go onto people's sites and say nasty things and say, oh, the trouble with you is this, or yeah, the reason why you're that is because you've got this problem. And like, and I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. And the reason why I'm talking about it is not because I'm venting. It's because I know that when these things happen, these people don't stop. They do it to everybody. So when I make a video about these things, it makes shakes people up and say, oh, Jesus, now I get it. And they feel better. And it doesn't affect them when people attack them. And some people get that. Some people understand me. And some people just don't. And they think that I'm a drama queen. And actually, the ones who are savvy and say, you know what, I know why he's doing this. I get it. So for those who understand me, congratulations. And those who don't, maybe one day you will see that there is a benefit to the topics of discussion that I have given over 2,500 on YouTube. And they're done to help you become stronger and to say you're not the only one and that we're all attacked. And that we all go through pain and suffering from our families who attack us. That we all have bosses who are assholes. That we fall and have accidents. That we make mistakes. And that we...
go through things that we shouldn't have done. And, and that is the healer that I am, or that is the, the guide, I guess, through experience of what I've been through. I am not perfect. I have never claimed to be. I'm not the best healer in the world. I have to work hard. I had to work hard at being a healer. I'm not the best psychic in the world. I had to work damn hard at it. But what I do know is that I am as truthful as I can be without affecting my family too much and being so open that I'm like my partner says, why don't you just open your bank account book and show everybody? Meaning why you, sometimes you're just too open, but I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide because I've been through the mill and back. I've been abused. I've been through trauma. I've been through grief. I've been through the most tremendous mock and ridicule of thousands of people over seven years of my life for being on a TV show and being called Britain's blind date rat. I've been through it all. I've experienced it. And it's made me the healer that I am. And I do not. And I will never regret a single thing that I've done because I am proud of being who I am at this moment. So does it affect me when people say bad things? No. But what it does do to me is want to cry out to that person and say, just stop. Because look at what you're doing. Look at how you are acting. Look at your knee-jerk reactions. Look at what you're doing. Because I fear that the next person they're going to hurt is going to be hurt for months and traumatized. And that's the story of my life thus far. So that's it, guys. A hundred and some people on. And I appreciate with you with all my heart. Love you all. Um, that's it, really. Um, we just we just do our best. And when we fall, we get up. We hopefully learn from that. And we shake it off and say, I'll try to be a better person. And I always say to everybody, you're allowed one mistake a day. We all are, except me. I'm allowed 10. So I wish you a lovely day. And tomorrow morning, um, we're going to talk about something that is really dear to me. Really dear. It's really, really dear to me. And that is watching people who come into the spiritual world, who embrace it with all their heart, and then slowly slip into darkness and it's a very very interesting but sad topic and we should all be aware of it because any of us can slip into that energy so till tomorrow guys i don't know what time it'll be mid-morning but it will still go on to youtube um my uh, leg is needs a little bit of healing now because it's starting to throb a little bit and that's not when i start to do my exercises now so i'm wishing you all a lovely night i'm not the, the most yeah i can't i can't leave here see so i can't have an air cut or i could shave <laughs> and i will do it tomorrow but yeah this is me um i'm not here as um an actor uh, um i'm not um somebody who needs to have a, a approval or appreciation however i do i do appreciate people who are kind and i do appreciate um love and healing sent towards me as i do to everybody here tonight i send you my love and my healing and my thoughts and i hope your world and your life and your path becomes more brighter and more powerful and just remember those words that i always repeat to myself no matter what happens to me no one has the power over you unless you allow them to so have a beautiful evening, guys, from my heart to yours. Take care and thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Anna Maria. Thank you for supporting MarkBioski.com and buying your authentic crystals, oils, incense and everything that I've worked with for the 20 years that have helped me along my journey. I hope you appreciate them and I hope they work miracles and wonders for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. If you are interested in the tarot course, 
um, let me know and um, what I'll do uh, is I'll do a special offer. Uh, uh, when I uh, when this uploads, if, if you say tarot yes and there's enough people, then what I'll do is I'll put the tarot course on a special offer at such a good price, okay? A really good price, I promise, um, as my gift for one week. All right, guys. Love you all. I'll do that tomorrow. All right. Bye. Okay. My leg needs some love <laughs> and some healing. Bye, guys.